Leslie Faze. Hey, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Daryl Brooks, Jr. Um, I'm here for this matter by special appearance. It is not my uh, intention to bring any controversy to you, Your Honor, or your court today. Um, I'm wondering how I may settle this matter. Um, is there anyone here in the court that can give me a rendering of the account? Please, if it Mr. pleases Brooks, your Honor. Mr. says noted. Uh, the court will not be responding to that last question. We are here today to start the sentencing hearing in this case. Uh, this, of course, following your conviction on all counts following the jury trial that concluded in, in late October. Are you fancy? Are there are oh, yeah. documents you filed today. One is a motion for stay pending appeal. There are two ICFs that came in as well. We kicked out full soft set. Me. One related to I noticed. court costs and fees, requesting a copy of the record at the court's expense. <laughs> And then the other one also requesting a certified copy of the record written and recorded statement that you're waiving all fees and court costs and that you would be appearing by special appearance. Good morning, Mindy. The court's not going to take these up initially, sir. Um, in order for a court to consider a motion for stay pending appeal, the matter must be finally adjudicated. Uh, including uh, the signing of a judgment of conviction. Uh, once that is done, I will schedule the motion for stay pending appeal accordingly. That way the state can also have proper notice of that and be prepared to address that with the court in terms of your request to waive costs and fees. Um, I will interpret your written ICFs as a request that at sentencing I waive costs associated with these convictions to the extent that is allowable under the law as far as the record is concerned. This court is not the custodian as far as the anything in the written record or the file. The clerk's court is the custodian as far as the uh, official transcripts of the proceedings. Uh, those will need to be prepared uh, and there are costs associated with that and there is a form that you or a lawyer acting on your behalf would need to file in order for this court to consider that. Uh, so I'll take all of that under advisement, but we'll not be addressing that specifically other than what I have just noted. Uh, the other thing I want to take up preliminarily before uh, I hear from individuals who are here to make statements is the letter that I sent to the parties um, yesterday it does address one topic that I wanted to address at the beginning of the hearing today, and that is your request for individuals to speak at sentencing did not contain a request that they appear by Zoom. And I wanted to clarify that with you, sir. If you are requesting that they appear by Zoom and make their statements if they're not present in the courtroom on your behalf when the appropriate time comes. Um, yes, um, I, I apologize for that, Your Honor. I didn't know that it was it some type of uh, step that I was supposed to include in that to make sure that they. Yep, dummy. Zoom. I'm a little confused. Yep. So I, I Convicted killer. I don't know where as I like to call you. Live whether they are local and can make it here or not. Um, and I had anticipated that either of the parties, if there was a request for someone to appear by Zoom, that would be specifically made so that I could then take the appropriate steps. There is time. My intention would be that when uh, the state has rested their portion of the sentencing hearing, all of their speakers have spoken. Sure and they have given their sentencing yeah, argument. That anything anyone I says is going to help her at this depending point. Depending on where it's at, probably take a break, start up the Zoom at that point, allow the individuals who wish to make a statement on your behalf to do so one at a time. But otherwise, I wasn't going to keep the Zoom up because the proceedings are being live streamed. Um, is that acceptable to you, sir? Uh, in, in part, um, so I'm, I'm still a little confused on, um, we know what I get the, uh, 
Zoom link to those who wish to speak on my behalf. My understanding is your mom has contacted the clerk of court's office. Um, I haven't addressed that in any way, but I would then give my staff permission to reach out to her. I believe she has left her phone number and we could do that and provide that Zoom information to her. And I presume she would be able to get it to the individuals on your list. It's very important though, that only those individuals yeah. appear on I'm, the Zoom. This I'm might not this will be a rough one. Approve, yeah. um, unless they're here in court, of course. Uh, and then the other parameters are that um, that individual it's important to do that portion of the sentencing hearing keep their microphones off their cameras off until they are making a statement and they have to be identified with uh, obviously the name that was provided by you and only those individuals what I don't want to see is you know one person and then 10 people behind them that's not what I approve so um, do you understand that sir uh, I have a quick question about that like right. one, one of the um people that wish to speak on my behalf would be uh, the mother of my youngest daughter and don't do that i'm not sure when exactly she'll be speaking and it, it's a chance that she would actually have my daughter with her with that how old is your daughter she's eight. Oh no don't have an eight-year-old speaker for you as long as the child is remains quiet and doesn't interrupt i will allow that one that's in such bad taste okay. all right so i will instruct uh, madam clerk to let uh, my other clerk know that the zoom information can be released uh, to your mom there's a meeting id and passcode and that can be provided to the other individuals on the list and uh, i anticipate that that won't be until sometime this afternoon that we get to that portion of the sentencing hearing so if they have um because i know my grandmother would like to speak and she's very elderly so if she has any um trouble like accessing it will someone probably on my behalf be able to walk her through that or well i assume she might need help with that or someone yeah, will be available she's 80 so i don't i don't think she's well i, I know that she's not the most I trust they will have Seven. that all figured out, sir. So, all right. All right, then is there anything else uh, the parties wish me to address preliminarily before I turn to the state? Yes, Your Honor, I do have a few preliminary matters, please. Uh, the filings that you just referenced from Mr. Brooks, I did not see those in the electronic queue this morning. Uh, would it be possible for the state to get copies, please? Yes, they believe we're hand delivered. Or Zach may be, Madam Clerk, Zach may be doing that right now. We'll make sure, but Teresa can make copies for you as well. Okay. I also wanted to ask a, a couple of housekeeping matters, Your Honor, as far as uh, timing and scheduling. If we complete the hearing today, then I assume that eliminates the need for the hearing tomorrow. Is that correct? Or do you see a, a version where we come back tomorrow no matter what? I do see a version where we come back tomorrow, no matter what. I I want to be able to digest the statements from everyone um, and process them accordingly. There's going to be quite a few for both sides, and I think it's appropriate that I take the overnight to do that and come back tomorrow to render okay. the sentence. Okay, thank you. That That's very helpful. Um, the other uh, question is we have the easel uh, back in the courtroom. Some people did want to display some foam boards. Um, if it meets the court's approval, we'll leave it at this location and then just uh, pass up the uh, exhibits and Detective Regman can display them if that's okay with the court. Well, I'd certainly like Mr. Brooks to be able to see them as well. Um, Mr. Brooks, are you able to see the easel from where you are? Otherwise, I could have it put in the witness stand too. And then Detective Regman could just uh, sure. kind of facilitate that. Sure, okay. That will work. And then other individuals have brought um, digital photographs that we'll be displaying. Um, so we'll need your clerk's assistance with that. And again, we'll be using uh, Miss Gussie at the back table to accomplish that. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, anything else from you, sir, before we start this morning? Um, yeah, just really quick. Um, very quick reference to um, the ICFs. Um, I did address uh, ICF to the clerk, uh, clerk of courts in regards to uh, the record. 
So I did, I did, um, I should have mentioned that when you was talking about it, but I did, uh, actually I addressed it to her, um, personally. I trust she'll respond in due course then. Anything else? Um, not at this time, ma'am. All right. I will note that it appears yesterday some restitution information was filed. Uh, was that uh, hand delivered to Mr. Brooks, Attorney Upper? The restitution information yes. was that hand delivered to Mr. Brooks? Yes. Everything we e filed yesterday was provided to Mr. Brooks personally in the jail, Your Honor. Uh, that, Your Honor, um, there were a number of documents that I did not accept. Mm -hmm. I'll have the mainly... clerk print them off. There is a restitution request from the Waukesha School District uh, totaling and that's just one piece of it. Let me look at the letter again. There's a letter from the state and then our um, crime victim compensation request as well. State will be requesting $47,193.29 to EMC Insurance Company on behalf of the school district of Waukesha and additionally requesting $124,220.65 to crime victim compensation. Um, that's the program through the Department of Justice and supporting documentation. Uh, I believe was also filed. Let me just. Well, someone's not going to eat commissary for the rest of his life. <clears throat> and we'll have it printed off. It was delivered to him yesterday. Whether he accepted it or not, I don't know, but it's available to him in the jail, Your Honor. All right, understood. Yeah. All right, thank I you. I don't have it. Just for record. Madam Clerk will print it off and you'll have it um, I don't, shortly. I don't know if they, where they put it after I didn't. And, and the reason why I, I want to state this for the record, the reason why I did it is because I didn't know what it was when it came, when it came to my um, sale, I was, you read it. I was just like, ah, whatever, I'm not getting it. So it wasn't like a exchange or anything like that. It was just like, hey, we got some mail. I'm just like, yeah, I'm not it was like, all right. All right. That'll be noted for the record. But again, it is being provided to you this morning. Um, and you'll be able to review that as you see fit. All right, then attorney upper one last question from the court. Do you anticipate making your sentencing recommendation at the conclusion of all of the other statements being made? Yes. All right. With that, then um, you may commence. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. And I appreciate that. I do intend to just make some very brief preliminary statements to the court and then uh, commence with the uh, individuals who are present and have asked to speak. I just want to um, state again for the record, we have organized the individuals who want to provide a verbal statement to the court into three or four groups. Um, I think we're, we're at three, we're at four. Okay, we're at four groups. Um, we have the first group present in the courtroom, Your Honor, and uh, along with their support persons and family members and things like that, um, we will, uh, go through the first group and then request that brief break to uh, trade out the groups if that's agreeable to the court. I just want the court to be aware uh, yeah. and state something that's maybe obvious, but maybe not. The people that are speaking to this court are direct victims of this crime. They were uh, either charged individuals or uh, representatives of the groups such as the Blazers or the bank or whatever, you're very familiar with these groups now after having gone through trial. These are people uh, with a, you know, a direct link to either someone that was hurt or injured or killed. Um, that's who we're presenting to you today. Obviously, there could have been thousands of people um, that would want to share with this court their thoughts, impressions, and the impact that this crime had on them. We did not turn anyone away, but some individuals did contact our office and expressed a desire to contact the court, or I'm sorry, to speak to the court. We directed them to write the court a letter if they felt it was appropriate. I don't know if the court received any such um, written materials, 
we also provided some written impact statements on behalf of our charge victims. I know the court has those and has uh, very likely reviewed those already. Um, so I don't want to spend a lot of time with my thoughts and impressions right now because I think what's really um, most important for is for this court to hear from these families. And the reason I say that is, you know, Judge, that at trial, um, we asked some cursory questions about the injuries that were received and the impact that these crimes had on the individuals that were directly involved, but we didn't spend a lot of time on that. And I think um, this court is really going to be astounded to hear the level of injury that many of these uh, people suffered, many children suffered the impact, the life-changing impact it's had on them. So this will be different and new information than what we presented at trial. And I think it's very relevant and important for your honor to consider um, when you're uh, uh, deciding on a fair and appropriate sentence and knowing the gravity of the crime, the seriousness of the situation and the impact that it had on the community to hear from these families directly as to what they went through. And again, um, this was touched on at trial as far as the physical injury versus the emotional injury and the trauma that has been suffered. So um, I think um, that will be important as well for this court to appreciate uh, this defendant's conduct. We're past the guilty uh, finding. He's been convicted. Now it's time to talk about what exactly his conduct did to our community and to these families. So um, these uh, speakers are grouped, not necessarily within um, the groups as they march down the street, but there is some logic to, um, so we're not gonna bounce all over the place is what I'm trying to say. We'll, we'll try and uh, clump them together uh, to make the most uh, sense to the court and um, with the court's permission we have a set lineup, of course, uh, we may need to um, be a little bit fluid depending on somebody's uh, emotional state or um, desire to speak when it's their appointed turn. There are some individuals that have said they're going to try and read their statement to the court, but they may not be able to get through it, in which case I believe Jen Dunn will um, step in and read the remain remainder of the statement for them. Thank you. Oh boy, um, this is going to be gonna be tough, people. On the record, that the state has complied with victim rights. Yes, we will confirm that, Your Honor. Thank you. And please give the court a heads up when a juvenile is next, yes. so that uh, the cameras can take the appropriate steps as well. Yes, absolutely. And for the record, we did provide a list to the uh, cameramen from Court TV, or uh, individuals from Court TV, and uh, we're trying to assist them in that regard as well. We want to thank them again um, for their uh, high degree of concern for obeying uh, the court's order and their respect and uh, uh, intention to strictly adhere to uh, maintaining the privacy rights of these victims. So they've been uh, absolutely very professional in that regard, Your Honor. Thank you. And then just lastly, because I would like to keep track and Obviously, I will honor however they want to introduce themselves, but if you could also tell me which victim they relate to, if it's not self-evident, sure, that would be great as well, and I'm going to keep a list. Okay, right, thank go you. Go ahead. All right, then. I believe our first speaker would be Lori Loken. And if it pleases... Is this on? How's the volume? <laughs> There we go. If it pleases the court, Your Honor, one of my staff will actually go let Court TV know when a minor is coming next. All right. And uh, are you going to say the victim that you relate to, or I can tell the court this is for victim UU? Okay. Okay. Good morning. I'm addressing the court. Is, is the microphone on? Yeah, it is. Okay. I'm addressing the court, but I also want to direct my comments to Daryl Brooks, Jr. My name is Lori Locken. I was walking with the Catholic community of Waukesha, my church family. We were celebrating the joy of the season 
in preparation for the birth of Jesus when you made your decision to drive through the parade route. It truly amazes me that you deny your accountability for the damage and hurt that you have willfully caused. In the years ahead, I urge you to carefully consider the sorrow and grief of the Waukesha community and the world at large. Ponder the loss of lives within our families, the physical and emotional injuries that may never heal, and the sense of personal safety that you robbed from us. As for me, you never gave me a chance. I turned around and it was only seconds before you hit me square on. I clearly remember feeling the impact. The searing pain of that blow is as clear to me today as it was a year ago. Bastard. Since then, I'm healing as best as I can from the physical injuries. But you took away my peace and my trust something that I will never regain. My prayer for you is that you will find your salvation in the midst of this evil. I hope that you will repent for the heartache you have caused so many. I too pray that your own personal wounds that you have sustained through your life, which has created so many demons in you, will be healed through this action. Thank you. Thank the court for this opportunity. Uh, he just I turned the other way, idiot. Normally known as victim ZZ. To you, Mr. Brooks, I'm charge 52. Um, on November 21st, uh, 2021, I was marching with the Catholic community of Waukesha and the Waukesha Christmas trade. I was walking in the back and I noticed our banner was flying up because of the wind. So I went up the hole down the middle with uh, uh, so people could read it. I was joined by a priest uh, who helped hold it down. Uh, we walked almost the entire joyful parade route. When uh, something caught my attention, I turned around and saw a headlight. Uh, and then I was hit. I didn't see the driver and I didn't see the type of vehicle. I flew over the hood and ended up on the ground with eight broken ribs, bruised lung, fractured hand, finger, and my face was slashed open in several places, required stitches. Strangers and friends came to my aid as they lay bleeding in the street. I spent three nights in an ICU, Recovery was slow. My hand still has painful cramps that freeze in my fingers. It's just but nice. I know I was lucky. Others had a lot worse injuries and six died. The impact on my family was great. My wife was home recuperating from surgery when she received the call. I was hurt badly and on the way to a hospital trauma center. Not able to drive yet. She had to wait for my son and his fiance to pick her up and drive her to Oconomowoc. And after I was released, she had to do a 180 from patient to be my nurse and help me and even the most basic tasks. The stress had slowed her recovery. The continuing pain was a major factor on me giving up a part-time job I enjoyed. We had to rely on family and friends for transportation to doctors for follow-up care for months. Neighbors pitched in to do my yard work and snow removal. Youth from the neighborhood decorated the inside of our house for Christmas. This crime had a ripple effect throughout the community. I do wanna take this opportunity to thank all of you for your diligence and sacrifice to be here. I tell people I was blessed because I didn't see the carnage that night. I just saw people helping me. But the jury and all of you had to watch the entire awful scene on videos and hear detailed reports of what happened. I'm sure that's going to stay with all of you. <clears throat> I wanted to thank the judge for her patience and knowledge, the police, Detective Casey, for their thorough investigation and quick arrest, the prosecution for presenting such a strong case. A special thank you to Jen Dunn, Carrie, and the entire victim's assistance team that informed, comforted, and listened to the many people impacted by this tragic event. Finally, I can't bring myself to thank the defendant, but the response to the evil act he did shined a spotlight on how strong, supportive, and loving community we live in. Many people and organizations stepped up to help me. Family, friends, neighbors, coworkers, first responders, Aurora, doctors, nurses, my church family, the Catholic Community of Waukesha, Knights of Columbus, AOH, United for Waukesha Community Fund, Catholic Charities, and so many strangers offered support and prayers. 
the vast majority of people are good. That said, then there is Mr. Brooks. He is a unique individual who can have a clear conscience after over, running over kids like speed bumps and killing six people. I would suggest someone without a conscience. He doesn't ask for forgiveness. He doesn't admit to do anything wrong. It is never his fault. When he slapped a woman, it was her fault because she made him mad. I believe if he made it home that night with the red SUV, he would have told his mom the damage wasn't his fault. He was in a hurry and people didn't get out of his way. Some crazy old fat gray hair guy body slammed his foot. I didn't watch all the trial, but the parts I saw that I saw showed Mr. Brooks had a lack of empathy for his victims or remorse for his actions. The only regrets he seemed to have is that he was caught in the impact on his own life. Free, he would probably not drive through another parade, but chances are someone so self-centered as Mr. Brooks will hurt other people again. The only life he seems to value is his own. I don't believe that Mr. Brooks will think about me or any of his victims ever. The feeling is mutual. I really don't think much about him now, but when the prison door closes on this felon, I won't think about him again. I do hope Mr. Brooks will use the Bible for more than a courtroom prop. He may want to start with the basics that I know his family had taught him, thou shall not kill. But then <clears throat> I want to read Galatians chapter six, verse seven. Your honor, I hope you give him the time to read and study the Bible. Mr. Brooks did everything he could to try to make the trial a circus. It is not a circus. It's not even about Mr. Brooks. Today, the court will hear what the trial is about, the victims. And as former Victor ZZ, I would ask the court for a sentence that keeps the defendant, Darrell E. Brooks Jr., away from society forever. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Excellent. Well, well written, well said. I, I do like that he suggested a passage. I mean, I don't know if he knew he'd have a Bible there. Mr. Brooks, my name is Jason Peckla, and I'm with the Catholic Community of Waukesha. I was one of the victims you hit with the SUV you were driving on November 21st. What you did to my Catholic community and to the city of Waukesha show that you had no regard for life. What makes it more disappointing that you have shown no remorse for what you have done. While you're sitting in prison, I want you to reflect what you have done. I want you to reflect that you nearly took my life. I almost lost the chance to see my wife and kids again. I may have never had the chance to love or hug them again. You intentionally harm my community, whether it was physical or psychological. You stole our innocent that day. Before that tragedy you created, it was a beautiful day we all experienced and never thought an evil thing like this could ever happen at a parade. My friend, myself, and the Waukesha Catholic community were asking parishioners and their families to participate in this parade. Imagine the guilt we must all bear for the rest of our lives. Because of your actions, I was out of work for about six weeks. Then I had to go back part-time because of my sustained injuries. Because of your actions, the multiple lacerations you created leaked out of the bandages and onto my bed, comforter, and sheets. What an awful visual to have. Because of your actions, I could have lost my foot. Thank God my nurse friend was checking on me. Because of your actions, my wife cannot get the images out of her mind of what you have done. You have forever scarred her. Because of your actions, my wife had to hand over my children to our community friends to check on my lifeless body. Because of your actions, my children, four and six at the time, had to go with a grieving friend to find her own child that was in lockdown. It took a while for them to be reunited. Because of your actions, my children are scared to death when they had to cross the same street you drove down. They were bawling and begging me not to cross the street. 
because of your actions. I need to reassure my children that this that it is safe at parades. Not sure they all feel 100% safe. Because of your actions, not all people in our community are ready to go back to the parades. Again, you stole that innocent from them. Because of your actions, my children are scared of sirens. Because of your actions, they were scared of red SUVs every time they saw one. They cried and hid. Because of your actions, I walked into the entrance of my children's school and felt like a triage unit. I saw children on crutches and a walker. What an awful image to be burned into my memory. Because of your actions, I feel terrible. I could not help my community and the city by testifying during the trial. Your cowardly actions did this. Your actions forced my family to seek out therapy and resolve in their minds what happened. Your actions made a second guess what we did that day. What could we have done differently? During this trial, you show no remorse. It makes you look like a monster. During the trial, you show little regard and respect to the court. It makes you look disrespectful. During the trial, you treated multiple witnesses terribly. You were trying to twist the words of our pastor, who is a man of the cloth. You made a comment to a witness you injured that he was walking fine now. It makes you a callous jerk. Despite what you have done to my community, I forgive you. Forgiveness does not remove the need for justice. Justice must be served and you must go to prison. My prayer is that forgiveness will heal your wounds and the wounds for the city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. He was freaking giggling. It, it, it's hard to take. My name is Marka Kachulis, victim BBB, count 54. I know I am blessed to be here today to present my statement to the court. Daryl Brooks's choices on November 21st, 2021, took a toll mentally, physically, and emotionally on me, as well as affecting my family. I remember the moment someone yelled car, and I turned to see a vehicle behind and to the right of me. My thought was, what is this vehicle doing here? After that moment, I have a void in my memory. My mind will let me see what happened. I remember my thoughts. Oh my God, this can't be happening. Please, not my hip, not my leg. My next memory is laying, lying on the ground with a person from our group and a nurse talking to me and asking how I was. They worked on keeping me calm and from going into shock. I will always be grateful to them. Every night I would lay awake and replay the incident to see if I could get the memory back. Months of counseling and the passage of time have helped me be somewhat okay with not knowing what happened. One of my fears is that when I least expect the memory, least expect it, the memory will return. After being impacted by the vehicle, I was laying on the ground with severe pain to my left leg. Emergency people stopped by and one questioned whether I had been shot. And all I could think of is why would I have been shot? I was eventually lifted into a police SUV and taken to Waukesha Memorial Hospital. I was examined and was released after being diagnosed with a broken bone in my left foot. I was instructed to wear the boot provided by the hospital, sit in a recliner, keep my leg elevated, and not put any weight on my left foot. I was instructed to follow up with an orthopedic doctor the following week. I went home and found it very hard to get from the car into the house. I couldn't figure out how to walk without putting my left foot down on the ground. My stomach was nauseous from the pain medicine. My husband and daughter assisted me into the house and sat me in a chair. I immediately passed out. And when I came to, my husband and daughter were concerned that I had had a stroke. They called 911 and I was transferred to Aurora Trauma Center. 
I was, was examined head to toe and again released with a diagnosis of a broken bone in my left foot. We live in a tri-level and I was able to get to the lower level where there is a bedroom, a bathroom and a family room. For the next six weeks, I would sit in the recliner with my left leg elevated and ice pack supplied. I also slept with a wedge that kept my leg elevated while I was sleeping. After experiencing more pain in my left leg, I was sent for an ultrasound and the ultrasound found a hematoma on the inside of my left leg. Standing up was extremely painful even without putting pressure on my left foot. It would take me a couple of times of standing and then sitting back down on the side of the bed until I could bring myself to hop on my right leg using a walker for balance to get to the bathroom or to the recliner. My husband had to help me in and out of bed due to the extreme pain in my lower left leg. I couldn't dress or undress myself, take a shower, go to doctor's appointments or to mass without his help. Every day he had to apply gauze wrap and an ACE bandage to my left leg to cover the blisters so that they, as they would burst, they were covered. He then applied the boot sock and a boot. Every day for several weeks, he had to prepare all meals and bring them down on a tray to me. We were fortunate that he was working from home during this time. I had orthopedic appointments and three rounds of physical therapy. I am still going through physical therapy. After the bone healed in my foot, I was still experiencing pain in my ankle. The pain limited me. I had trouble walking normally, could not walk any great distance. Going up and down the stairs was best sitting on the stairs and going down that way. As time went on, I was frustrated that I could not perform the simple act of walking down the stairs. Before going to the third physical therapist, fr frustration set in as I thought I would always have pain and not be able to do all the things I enjoyed, such as pickleball, stand-up paddleboarding, kayaking, walking miles, and traveling. My third round of physical therapy found that the whole left side of my body was twisted from the impact of the vehicle. After 10 and a half months and three rounds of physical therapy, I am now 95% back to normal. All the months of suffering and thinking no one would be able to figure out what was wrong, I was worried that the pain would remind me forever the choices Daryl Brooks made on November 21st, 2021. I wanted my life back. During this time of feeling, if a healing, I felt isolated and frustrated that the Advent and the Christmas season were happening and I was unable to decorate, shop, or participate as I usually would during the holidays. Emotionally, since being struck by the vehicle driven by Daryl Brooks, I have felt like a victim. Every day I was reminded that I was limited by physical pain and loss of self. The world went on, but I was stuck, not able to move forward. Today, I am taking the final step forward in my journey of coming out the other side of this incident. Life is starting to look like it was before November 21st, 2021. I know I am not the same person that I was before this trauma, but now I have an enhanced appreciation for life and a stronger sense of spirituality. I am grateful to have a supportive family, supportive friends, and my Catholic community of Waukesha who have all walked this road with me. Forgiveness is a choice. I know that I can Forgive you, Daryl Brooks, without forgetting the trauma you caused, without you apologizing and acknowledging your actions. This may take some time for me to accomplish, but after today, I will not let your actions take over my life. I will move on. Regarding sentencing, Your Honor, I would like to request that due to Daryl Brooks's total lack of concern for human life on November 21st, 2021, that for each count that the jury returned to Guilty verdict, Daryl Brooks received the maximum sentence for each of those counts. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Jeff Rogers. Um, my children were victims U and V. I'm a father of four, three of which were marching with me in the parade last November. Two of my children were struck and injured. I also serve as the president of the Waukesha Blazers baseball and fast pitch organization and was a couple, couple months into that job at the time of the parade. I've debated whether or not to read a statement for this sentencing. At the end of the day, I felt it necessary to have my voice heard. For my sake, for my family's sake, and for the Waukesha Blazers' sake, 
and for all the other victims. I'm here today with families that I love, and I'm so sorry that this happened. First of all, this event was completely avoidable. And from my perspective, there has been zero remorse, sympathy, or acknowledgement of the victims by the defendant. All he had to do was stop the vehicle when he saw the crowd, and none of these lives would have been changed forever. For this reason alone, he needs to be locked up for the rest of his life. But enough about him. This is about the impact on, of the event on me, my family, and our Blazers organization. I'd like to speak as a father, first of all. The impact this has had on my family and I has been immense. This last year has been full of confusion, irritation, anxiety, and depression. We haven't been able to live a normal life. The trial has been dragged out and literally we were pulled back through to relive everything, all because this person wouldn't admit it like a man and take what was coming to him. My kids are some of the strongest people I know and they have proven that through the faith in God they've displayed throughout. However, the impact this has had on them literally makes me sick. No more parades, that joy is gone. This is something that will never leave them. I'm still learning things today as well about what they heard and saw that day. I pray every night that God continues to strengthen them to push through and know that he is in control. That night when we got home, I'll never forget Caden looking at me with glassy eyes. He looked up at me and said, I'm really glad Riley is okay and started to cry. When my wife Stacy sat on the chair next to me that night, it felt different. She hugged me longer than normal and a lot more firm than normal and said, thanks for keeping our kids safe. Everyone saw on the videos that were shown, we're literally inches away from losing three out of our four, four children and myself included. I thank God each day that he spared us and provided the adrenaline, courage and strength to get my kids out of the way, gather all the kids we could and pray together. My wife was going to come with us that night along with our toddler son. I play things in my head over and over, imagining what could have been if she would have come. Where would she have been standing when that SUV barreled through? I have flashbacks most days to Maya's jacket slipping through my hand. If I wouldn't have grabbed it the second time, I know what the outcome would have been. Riley still has trouble sleeping with some nights getting out of bed six, seven, eight, nine times because she heard a noise or doesn't feel safe. A few days ago, I was one-on-one -on -one in the car with her and I finally apologized for not finding her right away. Thank God our friend found her and kept her safe. But as her dad, I've lived with the fact that I couldn't find all my kids that night after it happened. I went way too long not knowing where my kids were with panic overwhelming me. As a father, I can confidently say that this incident had a year long impossible impact on me and our family. Are we managing? Yes, of course, as God is in control. Now to speak as the Blazers president. This was a happy gathering and almost the kickoff of my presidency with the Blazers since I was only a couple of months in. We we're getting to know each other, welcoming a new coach, our new board members, and overall just ready to advertise our Blazers program. Looking back at the pictures from prior to the tragedy, we were so happy. So much love and camaraderie. We were ready for an awesome season. I spoke just prior about my perspective during the event as a father of three kids, but as the president of our organization, the weight of the moment to find an account for everyone felt like it was on my shoulders. We had nearly 35 people there. I knew I had lots of help, and for that, I can't thank the other parents and coaches enough. The moment was a blur, and gathering and putting kids up in the truck was the priority. From there, the kids I could find huddled with me in the theater and we said a prayer for those injured and being attended to. I knew that the next few days were going to be intense, but I never fully grasped how crazy the following days, weeks, and months would be. The amount of turmoil and struggle for our Blazers organization was literally insurmountable. From the moment of the incident, the amount of media and law enforcement interaction was exhausting and unending. Media showing up at my door asking for individual participants' status. Unbeknownst to them, the two of my children were hurt. There was nonstop email flow, phone calls, planning, coordinating, and filtering through things. It was endless work. This job went from something I truly loved from my biggest passion in life to something I cried about for months. I went from giving speeches on Facebook Live about how cool our new indoor facility was to speaking at Jackson's funeral. From there, the community really pulled together. The amount of love and compassion that came our way was also unending. It was honestly overwhelming. For that, we cannot thank this community enough. Finally, I wanted to briefly touch on the true impact this has had on me. My faith was challenged over the past year, but I can confidently say it's stronger than ever. The hardest part about the whole incident was not knowing where my kids were, not having answers for what just happened, not knowing if more danger was coming. I knew I had Maya next to me, but when I went back and forth screaming for Caden and Riley, that horror plagues me every day. I go back to those moments quite often, and when I watched the videos during the trial, it brought back all those feelings. Pure and utter terror, that's what it was, and that's the impact it still has today. 
Finally, in closing, I'm a man of faith and wanted to share two Bible passages which have pushed me through. First of all, my confirmation passage, Joshua 1.9, it reads, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And secondly, I met with my pastor prior to testifying, and he provided me with an excellent part of scripture, Philippians 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understandings, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you for listening, and may God strengthen us all. Thank you, sir. My name is Jessica Gonzalez, and this is my husband, Juan Gonzalez Lopez. We represent the Blazers organization, as well as many others, and you could even argue the state of Wisconsin. Last night, as I thought about my statement, my son scooched over on the, cou over on the couch and snuggled into me. He laid with his head on my lap, and I stroked his hair. We stayed like that until it was time for bed. He knows we're here today, and it was as if he knew we needed a little extra love last night. Moments like these should be pure with love and affection. But since November 21st, they are mixed with flashes and images of what could have been. Mama, I'm here. I was on the other side. This is one of the memories and words that I'll never forget and hear dozens of times a day without warning. The relief I felt hearing those words on November 21st was devastating, but I found my son unharmed. That should be the end of the story, right? We're fine, right? Physically, yes, but fine is a word we use when people ask us if we're okay, but we're not. It was only a short time before we had readied for the parade, got our hot cocoa, and took pictures to snap a shot of the fun about to be had. Before the parade, I left him with his teammate and new friend Jackson at the Blazers drop off spot and walked my daughter to her dance team location. With my mother-in-law visiting from Mexico, she was excited for her first Christmas parade. Stationed at the corner of the Clark Hotel with friends, my daughter's dance group waved with smiles as they passed us. She was headed to the library where I would pick her up. The Dancing Grannies, one of our favorite groups, performed flawlessly as they passed us. My son's baseball group was after the extreme dancers who were within with sight. Then the gasps and screams came from everywhere and the red SUV sped past us. I yelled stop and put my hands out like I had the power to make it happen. I felt like I was punched in the stomach when I realized the SUV came from the direction of my son's group. Panicked and lightheaded and knowing my daughter was safe, I ran to find my son. Running through the streets, my legs felt like they had a life of their own. I found Jackson first. I saw his little body in his blazer's jersey, his eyes looking up, looking nowhere. I knew he was hurt badly. Seeing Jackson on the ground, I began looking for my son amongst the rest of the bodies. I screamed hysterically, searching frantically. What ifs filled my head. I heard mom from so many directions, but it wasn't him. Finally, it was. I turned to see him with other blazers who were in the team truck. He called out to me. 
Mama, I'm here. I was on the other side. Yes, I found my son unharmed, but after the chaos continued, we ran. I covered his eyes as we rushed back to our group. I called my husband to tell him something terrible had happened, but had no words to explain. Headed for the library, we were told there was an active shooter. We ran again. I covered my son's head with my arms so bullets would hit me first. He cried. I tried to assure him and myself that things like this don't happen. At the library, I ran up the stairs and shouted for my daughter, who was huddled with a friend and her daughter. Yes, I found my children unharmed. But after, the pain and terror continued. After the parade, we discovered people had died and that several people in my son's group were hit, including his coach and teammate. We learned that my son's teammate was in critical condition, but I already knew this. I still see his eyes without closing mine. What does it feel like to attend a funeral of a child your age? I hate that my kids know. I hate that I didn't get a chance to cheer on my son and Jackson during the baseball season last year. I hate that my son said it was weird having one less teammate. For more than a week, it was late nights to avoid sleep and our family of four piled into one bed. There was no question this was a traumatic experience. Counselors were available. My son didn't want to talk about it. And today still doesn't. I tried to return to work. I tried to return to teaching. I couldn't make it through a day without feeling hypervigilant, startling at every noise, having a panic attack from the sound of a door, shout, thud, gasp, anything and everything. After the parade, I couldn't make it through a day. My joy disappeared. I felt guilty. I had no right to feel joy since my son and daughter were alive and others were not. I was open about questions my kids had, but I cried and screamed in agony when they weren't around. I overreacted shouting and pulling my kids near in the parking lots and streets or any time I saw a car come within a quarter mile away, convinced they all had ill intentions. PTSD throws all the punches. I left my career to work intensively on healing in a program for PTSD. I have only just returned to the workplace, only just a month ago. Something quieter, something with less action. Because after almost one year, some days still feel like November 21st was yesterday. Intrusive memories, hypervigilance, nightmares, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, anger, guilt, shame. These are all things I and others live with daily because Daryl Brooks drove through our joy and turned it to terror. When he suggested he could have hit more, he was wrong. He hit everyone. The toll this event has taken on everyone, physically hurt or not, is tremendous. And it sickens me to know that there are so many others with a similar story as ours. I know some today may offer forgiveness, but for me, forgiveness is for accidents for mistakes or poor choices that the offender expresses remorse for their actions. Daryl Brooks offers no remorse, but he did search for sympathy for himself. I cannot offer forgiveness. I will not. 
Daryl Brooks should be held accountable for every second of pain and trauma he inflicted on all of us that day, including the many years inflicted already on Ms. Patterson. Free, he is and always will be a danger to society. With that, Your Honor, I ask that the full sentence is issued and he spends the rest of his days in prison without the chance of parole. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'm Lindsay Conkle, and my family walked with the Waukesha Blazers. November 21st, 2021, my family walked in the Waukesha Christmas Parade. My boys were dressed proudly in their baseball jerseys, streets lined with smiling faces. The crowd was happy and excited. In a split second, excited cheers turned into sounds of screaming and horror. A trail of bloody bodies were left laying in the road. My family was not physically injured that day. We somehow dodged the path of the car by inches. Our mental and emotional injuries were severe and they remain a struggle for us every day. We have the image and the sound plow of a SUV plowing through people burned into our minds for the rest of our lives. My children were separated and I ran through a trail of bloody bodies that were left laying in the road. I will not forget how many people I saw, some seizing in an intersection, some unconscious and some not. My children cried themselves to sleep for weeks after and still do. They still wake up with nightmares, as do I. They could not walk in a parking lot without clinging to me, shaking and terrified that a car would try to run them down. We suffer from major panic attacks and PTSD, all from a day that was supposed to be happy and exciting. As parents, we have to try to help cope with, with our children while we do not know how to cope ourselves. My children, my family, and I, and every person that we know will never be the same after that day. There were many people that were fortunate, fortunate enough to walk away unharmed. However, Jackson Sparks was not one of those people. A child, eight-year-old, walking next to his big brother with his whole life ahead of him. The next time my children wore their baseball jerseys was to a funeral. A funeral for an eight-year-old boy their friend, their teammate, that they have spent many days playing and making memories at while at their brother's baseball games. His family and friends will never see his smiling face light up a room, and his team will never be able to celebrate a win with him on the baseball field ever again. Every moment of Jackson's life that was ahead of him was ripped away by Daryl Brooks. You, Daryl Brooks, you hid in a children's playhouse and ditched your hoodie in a sandal. That playhouse happened to be my children's, at the house we just moved out of a couple of months prior. That playhouse was built for them, built for my sons, and you hid there after you left their friend and teammate lifeless in a road along with many others. You didn't just get lost in a parade route, you disregarded police and the safety of hundreds and you disregarded life. You very selfishly ripped away the joy from the families who were there just to bring joy to others. There are many holes left in our community, but our community has grown stronger and we all have each other. You, however, will have no one. You will have no one in a cell where you belong for the rest of your life. Thank you, Judge Doro, and we ask that please, he never see the light of day again. Thank you. Well said. My name is Sherry Sparks. I am Jackson and Tucker's mom. I stand here today with my son, Tucker, and my husband, Aaron. I'm here today to represent my family, but mostly for my boys, who were both struck down by the red SUV on November 21st. I want to give a voice to our son, Jackson Sparks. Our family is forever changed. We are hurt, angry, traumatized, and broken. November 21st was a day that was supposed to be fun and filled with laughter and smiles. 
Instead, it became a nightmare full of fear, screams, and tears. My boys were walking in the Waukesha Christmas Parade with their baseball teammates, friends, and coaches. It was a chilly and windy day that day, so we all layered up and prepared to kickstart our holiday season. We met up with our Blazers group, decorated the truck, prepared the buckets of candy and flyers for the boys, took some group photos, and then I left to go find my seat near the end of the parade row and wait for our group while enjoying the parade. I had no idea then the nightmare that was coming my way. Nor did I know that it would be the last time I would hear Jackson's voice and see his smile. I wish I would have known then that the hug he gave me before I went to sit down was the last hug I would ever get from him. I would have held on to him a lot longer. <laughs> After the red SUV flew past us, it was pure chaos. I will never, ever forget the horrible sound of the car hitting bodies and the thud of bodies landing on the ground. I immediately grabbed my favorite plaid blanket, ran up the street to find my boys. What I found shook my world. I saw Jackson first in the arms of a police officer. He was running him to get a medical attention. My husband was right behind them and told me that Tucker had been struck also. Pointed me back to the direction where Tucker was. Let me do a second photo, please. That's Tucker underneath my blanket there, the plaid blanket. My world came crashing down at that moment. I wanted to scream. I wanted to throw up and cry. Adrenaline kicked in and I went to find my boy. I spotted Jackson's baseball hat lying in the road first then Tucker's hat. Then I found Jackson's shoe, which kind of led me to Tucker. I finally spotted him. He was one of the many bodies lying in the road, covered in blankets. I recognized the shoes on his feet. That's how I found him. They're sticking out from under the blanket. I stayed at Tucker's side as he lay in the road waiting for an ambulance to come back for him. He was semi-conscious, but we couldn't move him without a backboard due to his head being injured. They had run out of backboards. Luckily, a nearby shop owner slash hero dragged a door out of her shop to roll him onto so we could get him out of the cold and get him warm. An hour laying out in the cold road where he was thrown from impact. You can go to the next photo, please. This is what we were facing next. Both boys had traumatic head and brain injuries. They both ended up in the ICU at Children's Hospital. Their rooms just a few doors down from one another. The next day, Tucker asked us about Jackson, if he was okay or was he worse than himself? Do you have any idea how gut-wrenching it is to have to explain your 12-year-old son that his little brother isn't gonna make it? His injuries were too extensive for his little body to come back from and that he won't be coming home with us ever again. Leaving him at the hospital was brutal. To see the confusion, frustration, and hurt on his face when he's standing over his little brother's in his hospital room, taking in all the machines he was hooked up to. It... Tucker remembers everything up until the moment he was hit. He had actually turned around and saw the SUV coming towards them. He said Jackson was right next to him. He said he saw a few people get hit, and then he tried to run out of harm's way. He didn't make it. Being the protective big brother, Tucker blamed himself. He felt he should have tried to grab Jackson or done more to protect his little brother. It broke my heart to hear him saying these things. Tucker's physical injuries were also severe. He still struggles with memory issues and brain processing speed. The mental and emotional damage is severe. Survivor's guilt, PTSD, anxiety, he still gets headaches. His little brother was taken from him. He's suddenly an only child now. He misses his little brother and his playmate. Jackson brought out the silly in him and life will never be the same without him. You can go to the next photo. 
every holiday, special event, family function, vacation, there will always be an empty chair or space where Jackson should be. Jackson's absence is very prominent. Every day we face that vacancy and it triggers sadness and trauma. Jackson's life was taken from him and taken from us. Life isn't the same without him and it never will be. This morning, I should have spent the morning making him breakfast, taking him to school, hearing about his day later. Instead, I'm standing here in this courtroom asking for justice for my boys. We came so close to losing both of them that day. I miss Jackson every second of every single day. I feel gutted and broken. It hurts to breathe sometimes. It hurts to live without him here. My mama's soul aches for him. I am emotionally and mentally exhausted. The pain I carry with me every day feels so heavy. Yet I have to push forward, still be there to help Tucker heal and move forward with find our new normal. You can go to the next photo, please. As a family of faith, we know this man will face God's judgment someday for his actions. Until then, we feel it is this court's duty and responsibility to all the victims to sentence this man to the maximum penalty allowed under Wisconsin law for each and every guilty charge. We feel this man does not deserve to see freedom in our lifetime, nor our son Tucker's lifetime. We have learned throughout this trial that this man is incapable of empathy or remorse. He has shown no sympathy nor apology for all, the, all of the pain, suffering, and loss of life he has caused to so many. This man not only took Jackson away from our family, he violently ripped Jackson out of our lives. Jackson was only eight years old. Eight. He only had eight years here with us. He was robbed of everything. He will never get to hit a home run, catch frogs with his brother again, meet his wrestling hero, Braun Strowman. He won't ask a girl to prom. He won't go to college, get married, or have children of his own. Jackson will never be able to do any of these things. These milestones will never happen. He was a bright light in our lives. He was very shy to most people, but those close to him, to his family, he was a big ball of energy. He was charismatic and full of light in life. His life was cut out way too short. Jackson and the other victims deserve justice. We deserve closure in order to heal and find our new normal. We hope to achieve that today. Thank you. And thank you, prosecution, Judge Doro. Very much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, at this time, Your Honor, we'd like to request a break and bring in the second group. Yes, the court's going to step off as well while you do that. We'll Thank take you. about a 10 minute break. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> Well, that was just awful. Yeah, that was awful. I think I know how they're organizing the groups. I think this was the baseball team. I think they'll do a separate group for the dancing granny. And, you know, they're going to do it based on like kind of affinity group. But that was brutal. That mother held it together so damn well. I, I was really impressed. Uh, that, that, that was the worst. Uh, they, they all did a nice job in their statements. Yeah. It, the worst thing is watching him roll his eyes and all that. But we know. We know where he's at. Although he's not completely gone. The, the, the one guy, which surprisingly the thing that got to him, he rolled his eyes at it, but that's how you know it got to him. It's when guy said, you just can't admit, admit what you've done like a man. That yep. hit him. That hit him. And he rolled his eyes like a, like a jackass, of course. But... Th that got to him but all this other stuff that this you know he's hiding behind a mask and 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 pretending to pray because he can't deal with it no no he can't i mean you know you almost wonder to some extent if i maybe something's starting to seep through a little bit but i just <sighs> maybe because he's not he's not acting a jackass. Yeah, he's he's not disrupting. Although that almost be better because then she'd throw him throw him in the other room. Yeah, that's true. 
Although I think the the, uh, the testimony is coming from behind him, so fortunately they can't see what he's doing. At least that's my understanding. Ooh. Because we noticed the, the prosecutor was turned around in her chair. Ah. So I don't think that they can see the eye rolls, which thank God for that. But it's... Ah. Uh... Uh... That that's one of the toughest things. I, we knew this going in. I saw the sentencing, and I'm like, I I I, I know what it's going to be. I mean, victim impact statements in this case are going to be horrible, and they are. Yeah. Uh, very emotional, very hard to deal with. But I just thought, well, we have to do it. Like we did the whole trial, you know. No, I I agree, and it's like I put in the chat. I mean. This is really what this was all about. It's trying to get some closure for these folks. And yeah, we said it before, but you, this could not have happened to what seems like a nicer community. I mean, everybody was there for one another. Like, I just, ah, oh, God. Yeah, you know, and I, I think, I actually think the comment you made, it, you know, it was funny. I'm like, well, I'm going to put up a comment from John who's on the panel, but I get it. We don't want to, like, say anything. We don't want to talk over this at all, Right. Right. That we didn't have a discussion. This was just naturally a curse <laughs> between the two. Like, I, I, I'm not I'm not babbling over these people. It's just not it's not going to happen. No, but you did make a good point. I, I think I, I, I think there's value in them having us hear it. I lost you, brother. No, I'm here. I just said to turn the, the camera off for a second. Um, no, I think that there is. And. Who knows? Maybe once this is all over, you know, sort of similar to the Summers case when, you know, they saw it and that brought a little bit of comfort. Yeah. Maybe they'll see that they had, you know, how many people are on the stream right now all watching and sharing their pain with them. Maybe they'll find it and that brings some degree of comfort as well. I, it's important. You know? Yeah, that's... that's uh this this is as tough as it gets and we knew that we knew what the victim profile was and what's going on yeah as he's gotten older i've i'm trying my what's best to learn to here? trust him and to impart knowledge and oh, share wait. knowledge with him so that he knows how to take good care of himself as well too many tabs But yeah, I, I think that it is important to watch this part as well because, like I said, we had our laughs when it came to Brooks's shenanigans, but the actual crime itself is not funny and it really did hurt a lot of people. And yeah, I think that it's important to, to balance that a little bit. Uh, I don't know. It is. And the, the, the Waukesha community that does come out is amazing here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even before this, when we're like, we're getting victim impact, but I mean, these people, after he had dr driven through the parade route and they didn't know anything, all the people he encountered tried to help him. Right. They, they didn't know what he had done specifically, but they tried to help him. I know. I know. Give him a sandwich, give him some, th th this, that, the other thing, like, uh... it, it, it seems like such a, such a great tight knit community. And for this to, yeah, to happen to them. I mean, I'm still, I guess we have another three groups, so we might be done today. You know, if you figure an hour a pop for these, an hour for lunch, he only has nine people. So we might break early and then she'll announce the sentence tomorrow. Well, uh, you you know this. I've got a deposition this afternoon, so I, I can't do it. But I think John's going to do a stream uh, probably after the lunch break. Yep. Just <clears throat> I, I, I wasn't even sure of that. But <laughs> if just so people know, uh, like we'll, we'll probably break for lunch. Then then I think John's going to do that. And I might be able to go over there, but I don't know. This step this step's going to go a long time. And I, I, I can't tell how long this is going to go. I'm not sure. Um it was interesting, though. The prosecutor's like, can't we just finish this up today, which I get. Yeah. And the judge is like, nope, I'm, I'm going to take this. I'm going to absorb it. And then I'm going to come back tomorrow. Which I think is perfectly fine. I think it's wise. Uh, yeah. 
she, first of all, she's not she's not holding a jury right now. Everybody here is like coming for like if they want to or not. Right. So she's not holding up a whole bunch of other people. And I think the judge rightfully looked at this and thought, I don't, you know, I have to I have to give a sentence and I don't know if I'll be particularly composed when I'm done with these statements. Well, that's uh, not weakness. That's no. that's intelligence. <laughs> no, that's really wise. It, it really is. It's like, no, I, I don't want to. I don't want to listen to this for for several hours, and then and then all of a sudden have to have to say what we know what he's going to do. He's going to have a life sentence. We we know what the sentence is. Well, we do, but I mean, still, I think preserve the record kind of a situation. Um, the other aspect is, depending upon what his people say, I might just be furious by the end of his witnesses. Oh. You know, that ought to be something to see. Yeah. Like, yeah. for instance, his mother, who I don't know anything about that. I really don't know. I, there's there's lots of stuff out on the Internet or whatever. But this guy is a bad guy and has been for years. Mom's been supporting that. I'm not blaming her. That's what mothers do. But ah. so I'll be curious. Is she is she going to is she going to come out and, and and be apologetic to these people? Uh, or is she gonna come out? Is she gonna come out and and say, "Oh, he's a victim. You people don't understand him," or something like that? I am unfortunately inclined to believe the latter more likely than not. I mean, Grandma, I think, is gonna say something like that, based on what I've sort of heard on the back end, or you know. But who knows? And him calling his daughter, who's the same age as the dead kid, is just despicable. I don't think anyone, you know, it probably wouldn't make a good record, but I don't think anyone would really get upset if they just had a deputy up there with the taser ready. <laughs> yeah. For for in fact, every time he rolls his eyes, I think he should get one. I, I'm okay with that. I have no problem with that whatsoever. <laughs> I can see I can see an appellate court. I can see an appellate court uh later with those facts before them saying how how you know that that's pretty clear pro, uh, violation of due process. There, how are we going to pretend it wasn't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, he I mean, slipped in front of a jury. He's already he's already convicted. <laughs> it was an accident. Thirteen <laughs> times in twenty minutes. Uh, Faulty equipment, Your Honor. <laughs> what are you going to do? The things that you know. It's yeah. Air trigger. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, no, we uh, we accidentally overcharged the battery. All right, is this is this are we? Is this thing still going? They said ten minute break, and that was what ten thirty nine ish. So we should be coming back soon. I'm just I. I've done this before. Oh, where it just like blanks out on you? you or to... yeah, or like you pause it, like you think it, and it's not playing, and then people in the chat are like, oh, "Dude, they're back." <laughs> I don't Okay. I mean, honestly, I would be okay with it if they cleared his desk and forced his ch and turned his chair around. Although that might that no, might I, mean, result... I, I do think it's, I do think it's a good idea that they're speaking behind him. That that might result in violence. I'm not kidding. This is about the, as nice a group. That prosecutor, the guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, he looked like he wanted to kill him. Oh, he wants to go over and pound. I know I do, but I'm just not in the room. Yeah, you know, any yeah. any rational guy just wants to go finish this thing right now. It, 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 it's sorry, it's in our DNA. That that's that's. <laughs> um, Meg, I know yeah, they can't really going... control that impulse. Meg, I know they said they wouldn't run the cameras. I'm wondering if they'll still run audio though. I don't see if that's a, I don't see that as a problem, even if it's a minor, as long as there's no video. What are your thoughts? Uh, video for what? If a, if a minor is testifying, they wouldn't run the camera, but they might run audio. Uh, 
I don't know. Yeah, that's that's another thing, too. That. I think they might do like they, they might pull that maneuver. You're right. They might they might do what, what they were doing in the in the Cummings case where they would just take the camera up and show the ceiling. Yeah. Something like that. I think it would be something like that. I can't imagine they just wouldn't air it entirely. Yeah, so Kathy, similar to that, because I think the mother had the older brother standing next to her, which is why they didn't show her during her statements. If you want to be there best we go. in your job, you have to always kind of be peeking around the corner, or right? Over there. Like, what's happening over there? Because when you're in the media business, or even in the marketing right. business, yeah. you know who your consumer is. And you actually have to be focused on where they're going next. I was with a really great marketing <laughs> consultant years ago. We were sitting in a Starbucks. We were talking about strawberries. He said, well, tell me a little bit about your ad, maybe. And it just so happened there were a group of cyclists that were sitting over in a corner having coffee after a ride and i said we'll see that group of four people all right so is, is that playing on the yeah. record the state may continue there we go thank you your honor uh for group two i believe kelly are you there still jen can you record That might happen as well. Yeah. Oh, that'll be infuriating, though. Yeah, it will. That's the thing is I have a weird mix of, like, sorrow and just pure hatred. It's all part of the flavor, Charles. November 21st, 2021, me and my family's life changed forever. My brother and I were headed to parade. We've been scared of parades not letting us feel safe and comfortable or even being able to run out into the road to fetch candy. For example, when I went to the Arrowhead Parade, all my friends were asking me why I didn't want to go out into the road to get candy, and I said, because of the Lucky Shell Parade. And I was mad because if the parade incident did not happen, I would be able to go out into the road to enjoy something as simple as a parade. When I got to the parade, with my friends, I constantly remember to not go onto the road to be better safe than sorry. It is the last thing I want to happen again. How could you do this? Think of your kids. Would you do this to them? I'm just a child with a lifetime left to live. I'm also here from a younger brother, victim KKK. When he is hit by the front of the car, he was traumatized for it. I feel his fear. I feel his pain. Because when I was hit, I broke out into tears too. On the way to the hospital, we had to lay our head down on the floor because we heard there was a shooter. My fingers, my whole body was paralyzed in fear and fright. When we made it to the hospital, I was terrified because I thought I broke my fingers. And when they asked me what happened, I was too busy crying that I couldn't speak. I still think about this event to this day. The day after the parade, I couldn't even go to school because of what he did. All my friends were worried about me, texting me, asking if I was even alive. Sometimes I even think of all the others that were hit and how they were in the hospital for longer than me and how their parents were probably praying that their kids would be okay and that this would be a once in a lifetime happening. I think it should have never happened to us. The day I went back to school, everyone was asking me a million questions every time I was alone. Everyone was babying me, acting like, I was, acting like one of my family members was killed. What makes it worse is that almost a year ago, my dog died, and I have lived with it my whole life, so I was extra sad and upset. At that moment, I realized that our family had to find justice against the man who hit too many people and caused a nightmare on November 21st, 2021. I asked for this pain to never be caused again. And I've been asked to read a statement by victim KKK. <clears throat> when I got hit by the car that day, it hurt a lot. I got hit on my right leg and it still kind of hurts now and then. That hit changed my life and it still scares me sometimes when I think about it. I also feel bad for the families who lost someone and everyone who died and was in the parade. And then he drew a picture of a SUV and it says car that hit me and there's a little figure and candy bucket and bottle and me. 
So they handed that to me on behalf of victim KKK. <clears throat> Yara, we need to take a break for a second, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's important. Do that. I'm actually confused too what the break is for. I have no idea what this is about. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Get tails and tongues wagging with colorful custom graphics. That signs. At least, at least the ad had dogs in it. Yeah. Try uh, if you go to the video, click live because I think we might be a few seconds behind. What's up? Scroll over the video. See where it says live? It's gray. Okay, that works too. You're just a couple seconds behind. Um, I thought that. Well, well I, I had to, I had to leave a, a delay so I could you, you know edit all your profanity. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> That's not how any of that works, but okay. <laughs> yeah, as as if I as if I'm confident enough to do that. <laughs> Um, yeah, but why would delaying law and crime stop my profanity? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I thought that child did very, very well. Um, so that's good. Um, even showing that, that drawing from a victim's little handwritten letter. God, that's powerful. Oh, that's brutal. What, with the picture? Yeah. Oh, I mean, can you imagine being in that circumstance and then, you know, drawing it out for this? Yeah, it just, yeah. And people are saying, you know, they thought it was inappropriate to have children testifying in the victim impact statements. Um, <clears throat> but I, I have to imagine that they volunteered because I don't like if they didn't want to, obviously, they're not going to push them in any sort of way. And I thought she was very articulate and... She spoke very well. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know what this break is for. They apparently don't think it's going to be a long one. But... Ah, we got a ginger lover. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, so we might actually be in for a little bit more of a break. Yeah. Oh, uh, they're saying they might be taking the children out of the room for some of this. Yeah, I'm guess I'm guessing they're doing something in the courtroom. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a little tough because of some of this stuff is going to be really graphic, and you know. Maybe people decide that they don't, you know, certain people don't necessarily need to be there for it. Or maybe somebody lunged at him, started wringing his neck. I didn't see that, but that would be great. <laughs> you get it? You don't think law and crime would have the cameras on for that in a heartbeat? Which, which I'm not endorsing. <laughs> Nor am I. I'm saying it would be great. I'm not saying anyone should do it. <laughs> I'm just saying that I would not convict the person of contempt. <laughs> Honestly, Kathy, I'm not sure that they would give it to you. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, anything's oh, possible. Starting rumors, huh? 
but it wouldn't it wouldn't actually surprise me. Uh, yeah. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I would I wouldn't doubt it. The prosecutor is like, yeah, yeah, don't tempt me. Well, let me go on the other side. Yeah, exactly. Let's let's put a little bit I, of a uh, thinking. I've got a career in life uh, ahead of me, and uh, it, it it could go at any moment here. Yeah, but you know what? If you get fired from the prosecutor's office, just run for Congress. Yeah, that would be a hell of a platform. Mayor Waukesha, oh, no, you'd win. <laughs> <laughs> There's no two ways about it. Oh, God. Yeah, for the, the Nasser one, yeah, they let him go. He he made an apology and he spent a couple hours in the cell, but they let him go. His, that's totally understandable. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. That's one of the reasons why it's a, it's a little tough that they're running them so quickly, which is good. It's efficient, and I, I like that. But I also like these breaks so we can try and bring a little bit of levity back into it because you need that balance a little bit. That yeah. was that was a lot in one go. That was uh, that was tough stuff. But now I now I'm really curious as not that they'll announce it, but I'm really curious as to what the delay is. I'm wondering when they come back if the prosecution will make a record. That's the only way we'd ever find out. But we'll see. This is longer than I thought it would be. You only had two witnesses. But that was a really abrupt stop, too. Yeah, it's like some of them you can tell. Like mid trial, suddenly they're, they're, they're you know they're going all crazy, and and then you think, okay, they had to close it down and get the jury out so they could have the argument. You can kind of tell what the delay is, but here I saw I saw nothing leading up to it. Yeah, I don't know, that, and that's the thing is because there's no jury. <laughs> oh, challenge accepted, mate. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they, uh, they're, when there's a jury, you can understand that they need to take care of something outside their presence. That's fine. Whatever. That makes sense. Um, you don't have any sort of issues there. I mean, there's, there's no, you can't prejudice him anymore. He's already convicted. <laughs> I, I, I presume, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, th I think th this is a fair, fairly decent question. It's on the same law. I think you mean you can't profit off it, so you can't write a book and make money? Is, is this the question? Yeah, is that the way you read this, John? Yeah, the question. I, you know, I, I don't know, but I, I, th I think that some form of that exists all over the country. It's probably different in each state, but. Yeah, I think that's probably about right. Um, uh, somebody. Yo, Jimmy! Somebody say 30 minute recess. I don't know. All right. Um, well, well, if that's the case, then I'm going to make myself another cup of coffee. I'm going to sit right here and I'm just going to come back on when they start talking. All right. Sounds good. I, I'm just going to answer I, what a son of Sam often... is. I'll take a walk. I often fill breaks with, uh, you know, playing thruple clips and whatnot, but I, I, I'm just, you know, for obvious hey, reasons, not, not going to do that here. Yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't seem quite appropriate. All right, I'm, I'm going to hang out, and I'm just waiting for, for as soon as I hear it come back on, I will be here. I'm not going anywhere, but, the, but uh, I, I'm, I'm calling official law talk with Mike Break for all involved. Stretch your legs. Yep. We'll be here. And we'll do that. Cool. Yeah, all right. Um, somebody asked, what is the Son of Sam law? 
Uh, basically, it is a principle of law that you're not allowed to profit from your own crimes. So uh, it basically goes back to a case where murderer goes into jail, writes a book, gets a massive freaking advance, makes a ton of money, and people are like, you know what? That seems like a really bad idea. Uh, so pretty much I think every state has some form of the Son of Sam law, which if you are convicted of a crime, you're not allowed to profit off of the story of that crime. So that's basically what it stands for. The idea is we don't want people doing bad things, think they get rich off of the movie rights, basically. So, all right, I've got to take a bit of a walk myself. I will be back.
Find it, try it, paint it, love it. Find it, try it, paint it, love it. Find it, try it, paint it, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right. Well, that's great. Oh, boy.
sometimes I feel like there can be a stigma. I keep a lot of things relating to my sickle cell to myself. A lot of people don't really understand and I don't expect them to. So I just do what I, what I know is best for me. I'm just going to say, this is great. So in order to delay sentencing, we're going to have somebody pick up a terroristic threats charge. Awesome. Uh, thanks to everybody in the chat who's updating us. Because I 
have my computer occupied with this. I guess I, I guess I could use my phone. If the, if that's the case, whoever it is, I I hope they get prosecuted to the full extent of the law. I mean, that's that's disgusting. Oh, it's despicable. I mean, that, I mean they must they must have called it in while the child was speaking. Yeah, because I mean, I had to get to her. That's despicable. I mean, I don't know. We don't have we don't have much information, but I, I'm saying if that if if someone's yeah you know trying to disrupt this, they're they're just pure evil. Oh yeah. I don't care who it is. It's just yeah. It, like sorry, please said it's further terrorizing the community when they're trying to go through some yeah. degree of catharsis. And it needs to be put down hard. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Oh, my God. Is that a siren? Yeah, I'm like three blocks from Tampa General Hospital. Oh, that's from you. I'm like, yeah, where's yeah, this? <laughs> uh, I was wondering, is this a siren in Wisconsin? No, it's a siren in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Um, God almighty. Um, Carrie Adams. All right. That's interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Pete, not going to dox myself. <clears throat> <laughs> Although if they if they really do that they, they <clears throat> it may be a while before they're back because even, you know, probably isn't anything, but I mean, you you, you can have like a bomb squad. You just don't go, okay, somebody, somebody go open the door and see if, <laughs> you know, it's not how it works. Yeah. Somebody was saying the sheriff's already on the scene, so they might be able to do it pretty quick. But yeah, that could absolutely, uh, you know, we could be done for the morning. What? I mean, I can't piece this together. Uh, oh yeah, no, that's that's a totally separate issue. That one's totally separate. Nowhere near the courthouse. I was looking into it a little bit while we were on break. Um, She has taken the opportunity to mock, mock me for the horrible weather here. Already snowing up there? Oh, it's cold. It's cold. It happened all at once. Well, it is a, uh, it is a very chilly 74 here in Tampa, Florida. Oh. Uh. Oh my god. Well, at least all the ambulances decided to wait for the break.
<laughs> Drinking Malort the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, Kel, it's usually not that bad. Usually they're coming from the opposite direction. I mean, you know, Toronto, we're talking Canada here. <laughs> There's yeah, there's there's an assumption of the risk if you if you choose to live in Canada, <laughs> you're gonna encounter snow. I don't know what to tell you. Ah, uh, that sounds good. Oh, Gia, you just stop it. Gia is the one who was who was uh, super chatting from Hawaii the other day. Because she had to escape. Because she had to escape Southern California. Ah. <sighs> what a mess. Yeah, I thought we'd be done today. Well, big in you're in Savannah. As you know, I, I recently visited Savannah. That's good times. Shout out to Savannah. Somebody pointed out he did not seem particularly shocked when they cleared the courtroom. I didn't quite pick that up, but that would be that would be disastrously interesting if he played back the tape. Yeah. I could see that. Um, Rob is in Lawn Lumber, Rob. Yeah. Let me see here. I sent Rob a link. I'm sure I'm sure he's all over it from Fairfax, Virginia. <laughs> he's on top of the situation. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Yes, but then you got wise, Gia. And you got out of this godforsaken climate.
Get early access to Wayfair's Black Friday sale. Save on seasonal decor from $30. Washable rugs up to 80% off. It was still, sorry I was late. And I mean, you, you popped on right after I sent you the link. Because I was running around this morning. But I, so, I, like, I, I started, like, right at 8.30, but th th they already started talking. And he went full soft set in the first 30 seconds. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, I missed it because I was waiting backstage. But what's up? What happened? I was actually running back. I had to take care of a quick errand. So I was literally dashing to my computer to be on time. Yeah, nothing, but he just, just starts saying all the soft sit BS. I mean, it's like a sentencing. You've been convicted. It's over. Yeah. Well, and then him playing the game with, oh, I didn't receive these papers. It's like, all right, we'll give them to you. Yeah. No, I actually refuse the papers. Like, I don't care. Yeah, then, then he admits on the record, they brought them to me. I just didn't get them. All right, well, then that's on you. As if it matters. No, it doesn't. Although, again, <laughs> I, I don't know what they're going to do with this time. Yeah, give me one second. Let me look at this. Court is on. I don't see it. Court TV. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm. All right. Indeed, it is. All Court TV is, as is the video of the flag. <laughs> well, I'm glad we can help you through that. N nothing like waiting for tires at the discount tire. I've been there. You got that bad lobby. <laughs> Brutal, but fair.
Ah, I forgot. Yes, the bad coffee. <laughs> Guys, it has nothing to do with the plane crash. That happened quite a bit before this. Uncivil Laws giving updates? I mean, I know these guys. You know, Rob and Kurt? Kurt's, Kurt's chilling out in Austin, Texas. He doesn't know anything. <laughs> I don't know. I have the police scanner going on in the background. I am not getting anything. Ooh, sounds good. I haven't eaten today, but it's early. I, I don't know if he was behind that Reddit post. Like, he's not above it, but, but I don't think he's even competent enough to pull something like that off. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, does he have computer access? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing.
I don't know how that works. Do you think they would even let you on Reddit on a prison computer? Yeah, I, I, I doubt he would have access to it. So then it's just a matter of his friend group, and I don't think he has any. Yeah. So I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Who knows? It could just be shit posting. I mean, it's Reddit. Yeah, and Reddit's Reddit's full of dopey people who will do that unprompted. So either explanation works for me. All right. Oscar says, hit like and subscribe. Well, I need a dog right now. Hit the bell notification. Thanks, Oscar. I still that. Yeah, well, a lot of good that did for him. God, can anything go normally with this stupid case? <laughs> anything. Like, from day one when we started doing this, like, like we kind of knew what we were getting ourselves into, but I did not expect it to end up in bomb threats during victim impact statements. Yeah. Top to bottom. You know, I was on with uh, Legal Vices yesterday briefly mm -hmm. on that uh, on that girlfriend stabbing case. Oh, OK. I thought you were going to do that. I was considering it. I mean, it is my neck of the woods. But once Vices took it over, I figured, you know what, I'm just going to stick with this. But I was I was shocked. I get on there and I'm like, oh, that's the judge from Summers. Yep. Same judge. Same judge. I should get in touch with Vices and see if he wants me to head over there for a day or two. I could do that. No, you cannot. Those, none of those none of the dogs I know can behave themselves. <laughs> they're worse than me. Okay, they're not. But yeah, same ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Law and Crime. You're the <laughs> best. <laughs> oh boy. I, I, I don't I don't know if this is gonna happen. I uh, I just don't know. I mean, yeah, my, my dogs go completely shirtless. I mean I buttoned a couple buttons. Where are they? Let me see if. They... I don't even, I, I, I don't, this is just ridiculous. All right. Well, I, I, I can give my uh, Frankie and Ali soft sit thing. Secret yeah. headquarters of the Sovereign Citizen Patrol. Initiating video production sequence. We are no longer playing. So let's get revved up. It's time for Law Talk with Mike.
I don't know. Those are people are asking for dog clips. That's what I got. There you go. They are indeed cute. They don't come when you call them. They don't listen. But they're cute. <laughs> Um, it looks like mm. somebody's tweeting that there are two people in SWAT uniforms at the court now. So I'm not sure what this is going to end up doing for us. Um... Oh, those are cute dogs. And they get huge. Big, fluffy piles of love. I like those. <laughs> they do. They're just rotten. But here's the problem is, you know, you can go to Twitter and try to figure out what the hell is going on, but nothing's ever going to be verified. How long have we been at this thing here? Did you, did you know? You did know at the time, but you probably don't remember now. Uh, what is this? We're, we're well past a half hour here. Yeah, it was about 1020 that they cleared the courtroom. Somebody's saying that they're preparing to give a statement. I don't know how true that necessarily is. Press conference on Fox 6 Milwaukee. Uh, let's see. Twitter has nowhere to go but up. That's that's the glass half full way of looking at things. <laughs> All right, I mean, I have Fox Six on in the background too, so something happens.
Although I think Fox 6 is just using the same feed everyone else is. Haven't hit like and subscribe, then Ali's looking at you. <laughs> okay, it looks like one of the law and crime producers tweeted out that the court will be resuming shortly, and um, it's unclear, according to the media liaison, if the judge will address the specifics of what's going on. Well, th th this this ought to be kind of interesting now. Yeah. If you haven't hit like and subscribe, I just want you to know that you're hurting Jack's feelings. I have to be honest, that bumper always reminds me of a, you know, the National Lampoon uh, magazine cover. Oh, yeah. this magazine or we shoot this dog. I'm sure I, I wasn't thinking of that when I did it, but I, I'm sure subconsciously I just ripped it off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because no, I had seen it, not thought about it for 30 years, and then I had a YouTube channel and I probably just did that unconsciously. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Jack is whack indeed. <laughs> Jack Jack lives in St. Croix. And I took that picture of Jack. He was not happy because he wanted to play. And I had the audacity to want to sleep. It was about 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh still at the discount tire and i don't mean to beat up on discount tire i mean all all vehicle repair you could be getting an oil change it doesn't matter where they all have the same lobby i don't blame them if it was nice you'd be like you know what i might be paying too much for the for these tires like if you go in there and it's like the four seasons and they're like serving you good coffee you're like y you know <laughs> maybe maybe we need to tone this down what was it? Back home, uh, we usually took it into the GMC dealership, and they have a beautiful lobby. Coffee machine, soda yeah. machine, nice comfy chairs. That was actually kind of nice. And then it always smells like tires, as it should. Yeah. yeah. So even, even if they had good coffee, you're, all you're smelling is like petroleum products. <laughs> Just stop it, you people. It's just a front, Cal. It's just a front. Well calculated. <laughs> Actually, don't like don't like dogs at all. Okay, okay, okay. I do. I do like dogs. Come on. Um. Okay. Uh, oh, really? See. Oh, really? Really now? I see your dachshund. And I raise you a dachshund. Annie is asking very nicely for you to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. And if you ignore Annie, you do realize that that is considered capital felony treason.
Oh, yeah. She almost had that go for head turn. And he is asking very nicely for you to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. No I just hit the wrong thing here. One of these days, I'll learn how to drive. Hey, at least he is thinking about protection. I, I mean, from over ground. <laughs> I mean, he don't know what's on this ground. Look at the ba look at baby oil. Maybe that's what I touched. Maybe it was baby I hope, I hope it was baby oil. Saying he was getting after it when I pulled up. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm assuming that's a yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had I had a sufficient gap in time that I thought we that I that I thought we could be naughty just for a minute, just for a minute. Oh boy. I, I wasn't. I, I'm not so depraved that I tried to, you know, slip in a thruple. No. See, I, I'm going to use Miss Fowler's words. She now is in a thruple. And not only does she choose to be in a thruple, and she's shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. God, literally nothing can go right with this case. They won't resume until 1 p.m. their local time. So Court TV is reporting. I don't believe 90% of the stuff that comes up in chat. <laughs> well, if they're not coming back till 1%, That would make it well now nobody can decide which time zone it is. Well, I've got a deposition at once, so I, I I can't come back to see it. I'll do it tomorrow, which is, tomorrow's gonna happen. She already announced that before before we even had this situation. Yeah. Although it seems to me, depending on what on who he tries to bring in, but it seems to me that they should be able to finish the the victim impact statements today, even with this delay. Yeah, I mean they've been rolling through them pretty efficiently. I mean I don't know how many they have. Sometimes I feel like there can be a stigma. I keep a lot of things relating to my sickle cell to myself. A lot of people don't really understand, and I don't expect them to. So I just do what I what I know is best for me. I've been trying to figure out. Okay, people are saying, TV did not say that. I told you, I don't believe a damn life. thing that anyone said. Come see. I don't, I don't know if I'm quite ready to throw in the towel yet, but I'm getting there. Yeah. If we, if we can confirm, I mean, not throw in the towel, but just whatever, just close this down because it, it, it looks like it's going to resume at, at one. That's the thing is people keep saying random stuff and I don't believe a word of what anyone's saying. Yeah. 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's that's what it is. And it's going to be over on John's because I have a deposition. So, Jay Robine, link in the description. All right. That's that's uh, I guess that's how we're going to do it. Yeah, th this is how cool my chat is. We, we didn't expect this. No. We didn't have anything. I was perfectly entertained sitting here hanging out with the chat <laughs> with a with a static image on on the uh up. That's that's fine with me. It's still fun. But yeah, when I, uh, I will I'll set it up. I don't know. I might run out, grab some lunch, and I'll set it up in like an hour or so. So guys, come check it out. We'll uh, hopefully be able to get through the rest of at least the the victims, and then tomorrow might be an interesting day. All right. 
Well, thank you all for coming out. I'm going to close this one down. John's uh, going at one. Uh, so look, look for the link, and I will see you all soon. All right. See you guys.